outside cradle from the prone position, so I've broken my opponent down flat. Now, the reason we call it an outside cradle is because his head is uh, on the outside of my body. It's facing away from my body. If it were an inside cradle, then his head would be in between. So outside cradle, I call this the elbow pit. This is an armpit. I call this the elbow pit. So that inside portion of your elbow where your elbow bends, for an outside cradle, his head will be here. For an inside cradle, his head will be here. <clears throat> if I'm gonna do an outside cradle, I'm in opposite leg ride here, and I can go for a, a cross face and grab his elbow, but I don't have to have a cross face cradle. Cross face means I'm pulling his arm across his face. It doesn't mean I'm putting my arm across his face. If I'm just doing a regular outside cradle, it can save time. I'm going to just put my hand over here and I can post it like this to block his arm from going out. Now, my knee, I'm in opposite leg ride, so my knee is on the mat in between his legs. I'm going to replace my knee with my hand. Now, it's very important that my hand the palm of my hand stays flat. And I'm gonna to try to use the palm of my hand like a suction cup. Once this hand gets here, it's gonna stay here. It's not moving. Everything else about my body and his body might move, but this hand that's in between his legs has to stay there. Now I'm ready to turn him. Gotta take my leg out because you can't turn someone if you got your legs on top of their legs. This hand stays flat. And I'm going to lift his head up. I'm going to drive his head to his knee. But what I really want to do is drive so that my shoulder is directly over my hand. Okay? Now notice, I don't have a cross face. I don't need a cross face. I got an outside cradle. Once my shoulder is directly over my hand, I'm going to replace my hand with my elbow. So now my elbow is going to go down. Now, I'm going to lock up my cradle and various ways to finish. If he's basing out like this, then what I will do is I will load him up onto my knee and I'll drive him forward at 12 o'clock right over his head until he goes to his back. Once he gets halfway over, I'm gonna run my hips around his head. Run my hips around his head. <clears throat> From here, he's gonna be flopping around. But he's trying to get out, he might cross his ankles and try to straighten his legs. He's gonna be fighting for his hand. What I wanna do is put my bottom knee in the side and push him away. And then I'm gonna put my, my head in his temple and push him away. And that will get his inside shoulder down. If I can, I'll take this leg and I'll push him away too. And that's gonna prevent him from flopping around. So, a lot of times you see kids will have, have it in tight. Get over here so you can see this. The kids have your, their opponent on their back, but they can't get the pin because their opponent's shoulder is on their chest. In order to uh, remedy this situation, they need to get separation between their opponent's body and their body. Now notice, in this case, I do not have my bottom knee in the side. And if your wrestlers are not getting the pin, it's probably because they don't have the bottom knee in the side. So I gotta get my hips away, put my bottom knee in the side. But in some instances, I still may not be able to pin him. So if I don't have the cross face and he's using this uh, elbow to push himself away, so the way that I cure that is I straighten my arms and then I pull him in. Pull him in, straighten my arms, pull him in. Straighten my arms, pull him in, try to push his head away, all right? And I keep going like this. If I keep spinning and never stop spinning, I'm gonna be dragging that inside shoulder across the mat. Also by spinning, I'm protecting myself so that he's not gonna be able to get away because I'm spinning so he's, he's gonna be trying to counter the fact that I'm spinning him. If I just stay here, he starts flopping around, he might be able to get his hips on top of my leg. And then he might flop around again, he'll get his hips even higher. 
And if I, if I stay in the position like this without spinning, he might actually get over like this and then wrap his arm around my head. Now I'm in trouble. If that happens, don't let go of the cradle. As long as I don't let go of the cradle, I still got control. In order for me to counter his flopping around, I need to continually drive my hips away so that he can never land on top of my legs. So I'm continually getting my hips away. Continually getting my hips away. When the time is right, I'll spear him in the side, straighten my arms, pull him in so that inside shoulder's down. Outside cradle. <laughs>